In today's video, I'm going to show you a simple hack to get your overdrive working. Hey guys, you probably come across our channel because you have a first gen Dodge just like this and you're running into some serious problems with your speedometer, your charging system, overdrive, air conditioning, what else? Preheats, yeah, you need that if you're living in an area like we do here in Canada where we get snow every day, even in the summertime, and you can't get your truck started. A number of years ago, our speedometer went. At least that's what we thought. So we changed out the speed sensor in the transmission. Same problem, nothing, no reading on it. So we went back, changed it out again. Nothing again, it's what's going on? So for a period of time, we just drove around while looking at that line flashing by as we're driving, you know, just to gauge the speed a bit. In the meantime, we were talking to some people and they told us that this truck had a PCM in it, a computer, a black box, go figure, crazy. Who would have thought, it's a diesel, you know, all you need is a cable to hold the fuel open and just go, right? No, not exactly. This is a 93 Dodge and the first gen Dodges had a computer down in the front wheel well. Well, for whatever reason, moisture got into it and it died. And when that goes, you lose a whole load of stuff that makes this thing undrivable. We call the dealerships, call up different places. They had reman units available, but as you all know, those reman units, they just don't hold up. After some time, one thing or another will go. You know, it just, you can't trust them. It was at that point that we decided to chop this computer out and go old school. Hardwire everything. Since this was done eight years ago, I can't show you the process of actually doing it, but I'm going to crawl around the truck and do my best to show you the different areas and how we tackled it. We didn't want to open up all the wiring harnesses, but we did some wire tracing at different locations. When the decision was made to pull out the computer, we simply unplugged the connector, pulled the wires out of the connector that were related to the overdrive, speedometer, charging system, just to make sure that they were dead and we didn't touch any other wiring anywhere else. I'm gonna start off with the overdrive because that's about the simplest hack you can do, especially if you're stuck on the road somewhere away from home and you need to get the truck home. You can run it without a speedometer, I never said that, but you can't run without the overdrive because no matter how hard you mash that pedal down, you're just not gonna get the speed out of this truck. She's gonna be a, a real slug. Believe you me, I've been there. The overdrive solenoid is controlled by the computer and it gets a signal from the throttle position sensor. And I can see your eyes just glazing over. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, what are we getting into? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The solenoid has two wires coming into it, a dark blue and an orange something. Well, the orange something goes up to the computer. All you do is cut that because what the computer does, it grounds, it applies a ground to that orange wire, which engages and disengages your solenoid. So you cut that and then you apply your own ground. So you can put a toggle switch inside the cab and every time you want the overdrive to kick in, you can flip the toggle switch. That'll get you home. But that's a real pain to drive when you're in traffic because you always have to be mindful of that switch. So what we did is picked up an oil pressure switch rated at 50 PSI. And you can get these just about anywhere at any parts store because when you screw it into the governor port on the transmission on the right hand side, I'm going to show you all this in a second. Every one PSI is equal to one mile per hour. It's pretty simple. We want it to kick in at 50 miles per hour, so we picked up a 50 PSI pressure switch. Screw that in. So if you're stuck on the side of the road, all you do is run a wire from the overdrive solenoid to that oil pressure switch. The oil pressure switch is grounded because it's screwed into the transmission and you're all set. But we wanted some control on the overdrive. We wanted a switch inside. So in case we're pulling a trailer or heavy load, we can take it off if we needed to. So what we did was run a wire from the overdrive solenoid up inside the cab through a toggle switch and then back down to the oil pressure switch. Really simple. Let's get under the truck and I'll do my best to show you how all the wires are connected. All right, so you see that plug right there? 
that's the overdrive solenoid. And that orange wire that kind of tucks out and goes towards the right, that's what went up to the computer before. And that's what you see there. That's all you have to do. You screw that in and you plug in that uh, the wire from the overdrive solenoid into that if you're stuck on the road. If you want more control of that, you put a switch in line, in series with it, so you can break the connection and uh, turn it off when you want to. As you can see, that's the connector for the computer. Uh, I unplugged it, and in our case, I just unplugged all the wires that were related to the uh, computer components that were affected. Uh, you don't have to do that because it's dead anyway, but it just gives me a quick reference as to what went where. And by color code, it's really tough to see, but the wire that comes up in the overdrive solenoid is the orange-green wire. Here are the two switches. This one's for the preheat, the double rocker. I'll show you that later. This one here, up is on for the overdrive, so it's on all the time. If we're pulling a load or whatever, you need to turn it off, just flip it off, done. Yeah, I haven't really labeled them. It's about, been about eight years. I mean to get to it, but uh, just one of those things. So if you have any comments or questions about how to hook up your overdrive, put it down in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I can and uh, see if we can help you out. In today's video, I'm going to show you a simple hack to get your speedometer working. So when you're driving the truck and your speedometer goes, you have no way to tell how fast you're going. We use the lines on the road, but in the winter time, your face gets frozen solid. And you know, we couldn't keep doing that. So we found a way to get this speedometer working without using that computer. You'd think that the speed sensor in the transmission would send a direct signal up to the speedometer. Well, it does, but the computer controls the pickup sensor. The computer sends a voltage down to the pickup sensor to energize it which at that point sends a signal up to your speedometer and gets the speedometer working. We have a thing called daytime running lights. It's not actual headlights, it's, they just kind of glow and um, they don't really do anything except let other people know that you're around. If the speedometer circuit quits, if you lose that power to this pickup sensor, you'll also lose your daytime running lights. The truck runs on 12 volts. You'd think it'd be pretty simple. No, this pickup sensor runs on just under eight volts. So we had to find a way to bring that 12 volts down to eight to make that speedometer work. How do you do that? Do you throw a bunch of resistors in there? No, it just doesn't, it's not feasible. What you do is you get a transformer, a cell phone charger that plugs into the cigarette lighter and it gets the job done. We basically disassembled it. We fed 12 volts to it from under the dash and then we fed the tan yellow wire that went down to the pickup sensor with the eight volts, well, seven and a half. Okay, so right now we're looking under the dash in the truck. I'm gonna flip the ignition key on. You see that orange or red glow? That's the charger, phone charger slash transformer up inside. It's tucked up inside. I didn't want to pull it out. And it's hooked up to this tan yellow wire that used to the, go to the computer. I basically found another piece of tan wire, ran it into the cab, and that's what the, the phone charger slash transformer supplies. And this goes down to the pickup sensor on the transmission down there, way down there. So you don't have to crawl around down there. You just pick it up here, run a wire into your cab, feed it with your phone charger slash transformer, and you get your speedometer back. So that plug right there is what we use to supply power for the phone charger for the speedometer. The black white on the far right is your negative, and your blue is switched plus 12 volts. So when the ignition switch is on, that's hot and that supplies power to that transformer through those wires with those spades on the other side there, closer to the firewall, out and around, and inside through that grommet. Those two orange wires, that's for your overdrive control. And the best thing is, that little charger has a little LED on it. You know how cheaply those things are made. If that charger quits, well, your speedometer is going to die, but you also know that the problem is with your charger. You just switch it out for another one and get things up and running again. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any comments or questions, throw them down below. I appreciate you guys watching. In our next video, we're gonna cover the charging system. Please like, subscribe, and share this channel with anybody you know who owns a Dodge truck. 
of this generation. It might help them out with their problems too. Thanks a lot.